coming back. That's good, officer. You find your hands deep in tattered and fat. The box smells like cat piss. Economical, but also... Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Sure, let me have a look. I'm not purchasing any more clothing at the moment, and certainly not expensive armor that's liable to bring mercenaries to my doorstep. More than sure, what else have you got? Oh, no. I don't like those kinds of objects. No sale. A photic path. Counter radiance network. Anti magnetism. It's darkness. That's all I know. Sell me something lighter. You have absolutely no idea what a photic paths are. But the tattoos on the man are not that. Another time, perhaps. Shine on these sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. Sporty and practical, officer. Good choice. trap is full of locusts, but they seem weak and unhealthy. A few lie on their backs with their legs twitching. Still, no phasmid. Poor things. Jim, he's back. And firstly, I got smokes and piss and a little speed to spice things up.
Tequila Sunset. Mm-hmm. Let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. Mm. Ah. Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. And by Tequila Sunset, I mean you, the man, the myth. Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get pissed drunk. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer and that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's a pretty high concept if you ask me. It is. Oh yeah, that's totally your style. The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. Hey, man, I'm not judging. This life's a valley of woes. Some of the highest concept people in history have killed themselves. And been drunks. Either way, it was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Moribund Alcoholics, got our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this, we get our drink on 24-7. Makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Do you remember the sound of wood cracking? The billboard? Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just the reality we're in. Anyway, there was a brief silence. A gasp of silence, if you will. Followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast at top speed. Sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. What we saw was a sight to behold. A beat-up police carriage containing you. Right there on the beach, you revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. The time hath come! So, naturally, being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come, to which you replied, The time hath come for Tequila Sunset, the end of all things! Yeah, looms. Why not? Then you jammed the pedal and plowed right off the jetty and through the ice. The muscles in your right leg tense up. Your hands cramp on the steering lever. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit, like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. In this way, you and your motor carriage have a lot in common. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us, which you naturally agreed to. We asked about the whole Tequila Sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now, and insisted that we all call you that from then on. I think you said that you were the event, and that you would smash the looms of reality. Yeah, I knew I'd heard that looms line before. Yeah. I agree. Hours. It was an all-night drinkathon. Then, at some point, I think it was Sunday morning, you got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revacholian women. How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. How one of them fucked you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up and left without saying anything. Wow, that's quite a story. Yeah, I bet Tequila's a fucking legend around the precinct. You must be proud to work with him. If you only knew. You were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got fucked real hard, and that we've all been fucked too. Please, don't open that door. 
No one's fucked me. I do the fucking around here. Abigail. It seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say you're still working through some shit. Beside your gun and your badge, you said something about your hope or heart or something. To be honest, the details are a little hazy. In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage too? That's a big one. You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers whose main interest was cramping your style. It's more like you were cramping theirs. No specifics, though. It was more about you that night. You were the star of the show. Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. And that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. It's not meant as a joke. He's sorry for the hermit cop. Yeah, you said that you'd really behaved unreasonably and failed to uphold your responsibilities as a representative of the coalition. You kept apologizing for being such a bad cop and for the damage you inflicted on everyone around you. You also kept pausing to knock the heel of your hand against your temples, saying, stupid, stupid, stupid. It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. whoop de doo So now I'm a fucking storyteller. Right. Why not? Better than a beach bum. It depends, really. Are you willing to help me out? The gleam in his eyes and the slout in his posture is so incredibly familiar. You might get scammed here. No, the reality of the situation requires a rather modest contribution. A little motivational package. I don't want it, man. I need it. Can't tell stories without it. Drawn stories are boring, see? So, have you got anything for good old idiot Doom Spiral? A bottle for a story. Seems fair to me. Not much, but it will do. Hey, Spiral Boy! You gonna share that? Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. Something happened to you. Something happened to me, too. My actual name is George. But around here, you already know. I was once a reasonably high net worth individual. A founder slash junior partner at a high concept creative services agency. When my story begins, I had just landed a major contract with an insurance firm. I used the profits from my agency to finance what I call a cultural incubator. Abstract value generation, value per person, high concept stuff. I developed the paradigm, worked within the paradigm, but the burden of leadership weighed heavily on me. So I went jogging every so often to keep myself sane. 22 full-time employees, an all-star team, a potentially historical set of individuals. Worrying about them often kept me up well into the morning hours. It did. With my trusty Sansarik tracksuit, I felt like I could conquer the world. But now, dreams are worn thin, much like my tracksuit. One day I left on my evening run. As you may know, it's impossible to clear your head when you're distracted by the sound of keys jangling in your pockets. His eyes are clouded. His dilated blood vessels encircling his irises like stinging brambles. His eyes are your eyes. So I removed the key ring and put the keys for the front gate and the apartment into different pockets to stop the jangling, you see. At least, 
That was the plan. I was halfway done with my usual lap when it started to rain. The reality situation became very wet, very quickly. Wet, okay? It was raining really hard. I made my way back home and discovered that I didn't have the key to the front gate. I'd mixed it up with the key to the letterbox, which was useless. Naturally, the situation required me to climb over the gate, which I did. There was no climbing down because I slipped and landed on my ass. Ouch, indeed. Reality was looking rather grim just then. Me lying on my ass in a mud pit in the middle of a heavy shower. But when life knocked me down, I always got up. So I made my way across the yard. Standing in front of my apartment door, fumbling with my pockets, I realized that I'd also forgotten my apartment key. I wish I were, Tequila. I wish I were. Instead of my apartment key, I'd taken the key to the office. I rang my neighbor's buzzers. It was late, and most of them didn't even answer. Those who did assumed I was trying to sell them something and hung up before I could even explain the situation. People are naturally wary of ad men, you see. One moment someone chats you up, five minutes later you've bought a box of edible lingerie and a strap-on. I don't begrudge them, especially since I was known to be... one of the best. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Just then, I experienced a moment of clarity. I still had the key to my office. I could wait out the storm there. But when I reached my office, I remembered that I'd asked one of my producers to change the locks that day. And since I hired only the best, he'd already done it, and I couldn't get in. Anyway, long story short, life spiraled out of control. I haven't gotten into my apartment for years, and my girlfriend left me because she didn't want to date a homeless man. The company... well, you see where I'm going with this. He pinches his thigh as if to check whether this reality is... the reality. So, now you've heard my tragic tale. What do you think? Like nothing you've ever heard, huh? Tequila, I've thought about this series of events for a long time. If there was anything else to it, I would have thought of it by now. Why didn't you go to the authorities? Well, at one point they came to me, but, you know, I, I didn't have any ID on me. So they tossed me in jail for two days. I can't say it increased my faith in the RCM. No offense, gentlemen. The hobo lifestyle definitely has some perks. Not having to pay rent, first and foremost. Not being responsible for 20 other people is nice, too. But that charm wears off pretty quickly. Before you know it, you're wearing a shit-stained tracksuit and spending your days picking tear. Good fucking question, Tequila! If I knew the answer, you think I'd be hanging out on a beach in this formerly premium, but now extremely dirty, two-piece Lycra tracksuit? I used to own my reality situation. My business buddies and I had our own creative services agency. I had a nice apartment, an even nicer piece of ass. But somehow it all got away from me. Now I can't hang on to anything. Just last week, I stole this nice new jacket, but then I lost it too. The only things I haven't lost are these two drunks. You of all people should empathize with this. Perhaps this lost jacket is something you could help with? My agency, now. The Boom Boom Room. Our concept was combining high art with the lowest forms of marketing. The color red, breasts, and oil painting. I convinced my partners to reinvest some of our profits in an even more high-concept cultural incubator called Thin Air. The artists were happy, the clients were happy. 
I was financing a group of poets in East Rebeshaw who were developing a new universal poetic language. But then it all went to shit. Sounds intriguing. What say you, Art Cop? If it sounds like it makes no sense, that's because it doesn't. I know! It was fucking awesome! Too bad I went on a jog, unleashing a cascade of doom that washed it all away. What? You've never seen 100% Lycra before? Go on, feel that primo material. You really shouldn't touch it. Pretty nice, huh? This might be one of the last of its kind. Should probably be in a museum, honestly. Good God. It's nearly impossible to describe how dirty this texture is. It's like rubbing two jellyfish skins together. You feel about 15% less human for having touched it. Randomized trials have also found Lycra, TM, to be associated with a number of exotic, highly malignant cancers. So you also have that to look forward to. And then there's the smell. But you don't even want to think about that. Wow, you're lucky. He never lets me feel it. That's because your paws are fucking filthy, Rosie. We're right next to the bay. You could wash them any time. My fellow members of the Union of Moribund Alcoholics? They're exactly what they look like. Hey, tequila! You wanna buy some speed? Shut the fuck up, Rosemary. He's a cop, remember? I thought he was a cool cop. A gurgling sound comes from the direction of the non-responsive man. And, yeah, you're already acquainted with abs. So, yeah, that's basically us. We drink together. Tequila, it's a verifiable tragedy. It was practically brand new. Sure, it didn't really go with my Lycra threads, but it did itch a lot less. Say, you're a detective, right? Maybe you can help old Doom spiral out. Solve the case of the missing jacket. What do you say, Tequila? Yeah, exactly. You're here to serve, right? If I knew where I lost it, don't you think I'd have it? I mean... Maybe I was up by the boardwalk, or walking along the beach, or checking out the abandoned fish market. Somewhere north of here, that's for sure. You could ask around, see if anyone's seen it. I'm all ears, Tequila. What's in a name? Hey, Spiral Boy, you gonna share that? Oh, oh, oh. Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. Something... I was once a reasonably high net worth individual. A founder slash junior partner. So you don't want to just hear the same story again. Okay. Okay. Huh. I do. But as you can see, my fuel tank is running quite low. If you catch my drift. Cotton mouth is keeping my tongue imprisoned. The legend! He's back! And firstly, I got smokes and piss and a little speed to spice things up. Bottoms up, Captain! Tequila Sunset. Of course. Drink first, story later. Not much, but it will do. The tale I'm about to tell you is an urban legend particular to Martinez. That said, I first heard it from a former bicycle courier in Koran. There are many variations on the basic story, and the details often conflict. What everyone agrees on is that nobody knows the exact nature or identity of the phenomenon. Are you telling the story of the Headless... Shut the fuck up, Rosemary. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Summer of 44. 17-year-old Gertrude Hett is walking home from a late shift at the harbor. It's almost midnight. She stops for a cigarette near the canal. The streets are warmed by a southerly breeze. The lights of a passing motor carriage bloom and fade in the distance. In the harbor's dark, her cigarette is a beacon, dancing alone. The image comes to you effortlessly, as though you'd walked the same streets yourself a thousand times. Our heroine finds herself enjoying the peace and quiet the canal provides. What she doesn't know is that her peace is about to be shattered. From behind her comes the clattering of hooves. Startled, she turns around, and what does she see? Well, yes, but it's the man on the horse that's of interest here. A man... The pause is long and dramatic. With no head on his shoulders. Wearing a Falm tracksuit, searching for the legendary Falm cap that went missing when he lost his head. I thought that he rode a headless pig. Well, there are many versions of this story, the most peculiar of which has the headless Falm rider riding on the back of another headless man. If I hadn't lost my keys that one time, I'd agree with you. But. Life is a cruel mistress. Gertrude Hett may have been the first to witness the headless Faun rider, but she wasn't the last. Oh no. Tell him about the two feminists by the locks. Fuck, Rosemary, they were dating. No one said they were feminists. Everyone always misremembering this stuff. Hmm. This wouldn't be the Deponte Delgado case, would it? What? You know it. I've read the case file, but please, go on. Right. <clears throat> Early autumn of 46. Ulla de Pont and Eva Delgado are fishing near the waterlock long after the sun has set. The wind picks up. A sky already dark now blackens. Water starts falling from above. The first cold rain of the season. Two women stand on a small outcropping of rocks. One of them is wearing a purple raincoat. Thin lines reach out from the rods into the sea. Small droplets start appearing on the surface with increasing frequency. The women are caught in the downpour. They act quickly. Eva gathers the rods whilst Ulla turns around to reach for the tackle box. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. When she sees something, her shriek is so violent that the residents of the nearby apartment building believe lightning has struck. But there is no lightning. Only a heavy downpour and the silhouette of the headless Falm Rider looming on the horizon. Ulla makes a run for the shore, but Eva slips on a wet rock and disappears into the cold, cold canal with nary a sound. Her body is never recovered. Naturally, Ula de Ponte became the prime suspect in the disappearance of Eva Delgado. De Ponte maintained that it was the so-called headless fawn rider and that she ran fearing for her life. During the investigation, it became apparent that there was a love triangle, the third party being some small-time businessman. I don't remember the exact details. The leading theory was that an argument broke out on the jetty and De Ponte pushed Delgado into the canal, then cooked up this stupid cover story. No, she committed suicide before she could be taken into custody. They found her in the bathroom with a rifle, her face slowly peeling off the ceiling. Not a pretty scene. Man, that's some grisly detail. Oh well, here's to another case closed. Anyway, that's the story of the Headless Falm Rider. Pretty crazy, huh? Well, Tequila, that's part of the legend. No one knows for sure. There are a couple of possibilities, though. Some say he was an undercover cop who blew his cover and got beheaded by the vicious gang he had infiltrated. Now he rides, searching for his lost found cap, Plotting revenge. O oh, headless brother, where art thou? 
Others claim he was a professional jockey who veered off course during a steeplechase, ended up in somebody's backyard, and got decapitated by an exceptionally taut clothesline. Even decapitation couldn't stop his commitment to the sport. Are you that committed? Personally, I think he was just some guy who hanged himself from a really tall tree, and the fall was so violent that his head came clean off. Coincidentally, at that exact moment, a horse happened to pass under him, and his beheaded corpse mounted it, where it remains to this day. But then, no one really knows. For some reason, this does strike you as the most plausible theory of them all. <laughs> like you could do better, Tequila. Anyway, to each his own. You want to hear any other stories? Hard to argue is that, I suppose. That's the reality situation for you. You think you got a handle on it, then blam! It throws some wild shit at you. Ah, that's why it's critical to stay well hydrated. Yeah? Why don't you go eat shit, Tequila? There's no way you know a better one than that. I have to admit, that's pretty high concept. Still not as awesome as a headless rider in a found tracksuit, though. Yeah? Why don't you go eat shit, Tequila? There's no way you know a better one than that. Acid gnomes? Sounds like a stupid, low-concept band name. Yeah? Why don't... Giants? That the best you got? Give me a break, Tequila. Yeah? What? Do you always try to pick the lamest option possible? Come on, Tequila! Yeah? Why don't you go eat shit, Tequila? Damn right it doesn't. So why don't you just shut up and leave it to the master? No one knows. Some say he stalks Martinez to this day, and can be seen near the canal when the clock strikes midnight. He won't, though, because it's just a stupid legend. Aye. I saw him one night when I was right shit-faced. I actually do have one. The strangest of them all. But I'll need to fortify myself before I can tell that one. Do you have anything to fortify old Doom Spiral? Tell me you got some story juice. If you find any, I'd be extremely grateful. The legend, he's back. And firstly, I got smokes and piss and a little speed to spice things up. Bottoms up, Captain. Tequila Sunset. Of course. Drink first, story later. No, no, no. Contrary to popular belief, I enjoy being alive. Not much, but it will do. This last one is the most Martinet story I've ever heard. I've never heard it mentioned outside of here. At first, I thought it was a joke, to be honest. But I've been on the coast eight, nine months now, and in that time, I've seen at least three expeditions come through, searching for something. A shovel hits the sand somewhere behind the reeds, near an abandoned construction yard. The young men look over their shoulders suspiciously. The sound of their digging seems loud in the sudden silence. Magic animals? No, man, this is serious stuff. No, Tequila. Most people already know where they live. It's guys like you and me that are the exceptions. Hey, hey! F 
Fuck you, tequila. All kinds. I've seen archaeologists, gangsters, even a bunch of ad agency types. I'm telling you, tequila, this thing's got a pull on certain kinds of people. You know, obsessive types. People with predilections. Some of those expeditions come back after a week or so, looking haggard and dejected. Others don't return at all. The first time I saw one of these expeditions, I thought they were fucking with me. There was no way it could be true. It was just too high concept, even for me. Wait. There's no way. It can't be. Or can it? I'm not even sure I should be telling you this story, to be perfectly honest. You're in a fragile state, and it might be too much for you to handle. Okay, fine, I'll tell you. But I'm warning you, it's pretty out there. Our story begins at a legendary design studio, right here in Martinez. There was this designer. His exact name is lost to history, but in life, he was a legend. Made it big in Aranya where he did some real pioneering work on grotesque and sans-serif typography. A fucking genius, man. That is, if he even existed. Who knows? It's an urban legend, after all. He existed, all right. You feel it deep within your basal ganglia. He was as real as you are. I'm talking about... Anyway, some time later, he started his own personal studio here in Martinez. And that's when he started working on some really wild stuff. I'm talking some glass-smooth, forward-looking design language. The kind of thing that would totally overthrow the old regime, design-wise. A paradigm-shattering revolutionary. But then, something turned. You see, it's widely known that Nose candy and pioneer graphic design work go hand in hand. You know tequila, nose candy, the white railroad, party powder. The kids on the streets also call it snow day. Or email and gold. For the plateau on which most of the world's supply is grown and harvested. Typically by slave labor. Sinus salt, the white knight. Can't see for its popularity among the aristocratic class of the prior century. Along with a number of more banal street names. Blow, of course, but also flake, powder, pearl. Really, anything that's white will work. He's talking about cocaine. Shit yeah, tequila. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You've got to understand the work this guy was doing was so high concept that regular amounts of cocaine just weren't cutting it. By the end, they were bringing it in by the lorry load. Now, as you might imagine, snorting that much cocaine can't be healthy for a regular human, right? Right. Wrong. Do it all the time. All day, baby. Hey, tequila, pay attention. The story goes that one day he was balls deep in work on what he thought would be his pièce de résistance. An advert so minimal it contained neither text nor images, just pure white. Apparently the idea was too high concept even for this genius. He dropped dead right at his desk before he could finish. His last words are recorded to have been, It's as white as a blizzard of cocaine. I know, Tequila. I know. But the story doesn't end there. Supposedly, when they performed the autopsy, the coroner discovered nearly a quarter kilo of coke jammed into his nasal cavity. That's almost certainly anatomically impossible. Wrong again, nerd. Where there's a will, there's a way. That's right. 250 grams of blow had accumulated in there over the years. We're talking high-grade Saramaritzian pure. Not that cut-rate shit your grandma does. There are those who believe the designer was buried with this quarter key of nose candy still lodged in his sinuses. 
That's what those expeditions are looking for. The Cocaine Skull. The Cocaine Skull. No. Wow! Here's the kicker. This designer, this lead designer of a world-famous design studio, was born in Martinez. A local boy, Martin Martinez. That's why he brought his studio here, back to where it all began. And that's why they buried him here, too. Perhaps right under Ab's pipe there. Or probably further down the coast, or in some yard in Martinez proper. A hidden mausoleum, no one knows exactly. No, my grandma always told me his grave lay somewhere on the islets on the bay. This is ludicrous and physically impossible. Sinuses can contain that amount of anything. Now, now, detective. Always the skeptic. My only question is, where does one get a shovel? The archaeologists say they want to put it in a museum. The gangsters say they want to sell it on the black market. And the ad agency guys say they're seeking inspiration. Bullshit. They just want to snort it. But you could beat them to it, Harry. You could snort the magic skull cocaine instead. I'm pretty sure they all just want to snort it, though. And why wouldn't they, eh? Sounds like right strong stuff. Don't listen to him or his grandma. He's just making things up. No, my grandma told me. I've heard other people say it too. That it's underwater. Or no, maybe it was the storm suit. Or maybe it's in the air. Or in an ancient state pyramid of shore. In a pyramid? Now that would be something. They're pretty vague about it in general. The gangsters like to claim they're looking for the grave of a friend with picks and shovels. The archaeologists act all official about it, saying they're conducting serious research. Honestly, I think they're not really scientists, just rich. The junkies, for some reason, are pretty upfront about it. They just say they're looking to snort some blow out of a dead man's nasal cavity. Honest men on an honest quest. You should join them. By now, I'd say I know about as much about it as anyone on the coast. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on just a minute. Finding it right now is literally impossible. What? For one... The way is blocked by that big lorry that says Delta Logistics Company on the side. You definitely have to search the area behind that lorry, too. Yet, it is impassable. And second, outfitting an expedition like that is expensive. It'd have to be a big production to do the cocaine skull justice. You need new gear, people who know what they're doing, all kinds of provisions. It's just not feasible within the economic and temporal frame of our current setup. Matter of fact, unless a bunch of money just falls out of the sky, we might never know what's up with that skull. I have to agree. We barely have what we need to solve the case we've got now. We can't afford to run around chasing after quasi-mythical pieces of drug paraphernalia. Besides, it would look extremely bad for the RCM to be caught up in something that has the word cocaine writ large on it. The PR is tricky on this. Wait, maybe there's another way. Maybe up around the coast? Don't give up now. Yeah, well, that's the reality situation for you. Who knows, though? Maybe someday we'll get our chance. Not that I can think of, currently. That might be the case, yes.
As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. It's a sordid, filthy tale, not for the weak. Are you sure you can stomach it? Some secrets are better left uncovered. Don't even try. Seriously. It occurs to you that you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather the thick crust of jetsam and seagull shit that ensconces it. It smells like a dead sea creature, tangled in grey strands of seaweed. It must have spent quite some time in the water before the tide deposited it ashore. Why? Why did you think about it? Look at your hands. They're covered in muck. Now you're just flicking that shit everywhere. This is a disaster. You'll never get the smell out. Tequila Sunset. Ah, Tequila. I knew you'd come through. That's fucking great, man. Let me see. What? This isn't my jacket. My jacket was beautiful. This is fucking filthy. What am I supposed to do with this? I'm not taking a disgusting pile of obo rags. I may be in an irrecoverably decaying orbit, but I've still got standards. Either bring it back the way it was before, or find a dumpster to burn it in. You know, despite the guano, it looks like the jacket itself is stain resistant. It may just need a good scrubbing. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I can wash it for you, but it's going to take about a half an hour. Think you can stay put for that long? Hell yeah. No, we must run around ceaselessly. It would be torture to stay put. I could use a breather. It's been another track and field day. Well, hand it over then, and I'll see what I can do. Merci. I'm proud of this one. It's pretty nice underneath all that field. I hope you take better care of it than its last owner. Tequila Sunset. My jacket? A look of consternation crosses the man's face. He looks at you, then at his bottle, then back at you. What the fuck are you talking about, Tequila? Rosemary, what the fuck is Tequila talking about? Oi, that's the jacket you stole two weeks ago from the kid who was making it with his gal on the beach. That's... Disgusting. I've never done anything like that in my life. You're both delusional. <sighs> Found. That's medium concept stuff. It becomes abundantly clear to you how this man managed to lose his keys, business, friends, and girlfriend. I'm calling it. It's neurological. That shit is so medium concept, I wouldn't touch it with a stick. But yeah, okay. I'm sure it looks great on you. It's an okay jacket, if you are into that look. Okay, let's step aside for a second. I have something I want to talk about. 
I've been meaning to have a little chat with you about your sense of style. For starters, you are dressed like an old fascist. Is that really appropriate? Then maybe you should change your look. You know the expression, the clothes make the man? The right outfit, in the right situation, can make all the difference in the world. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, detective. A warm smile. Anyway, we should probably get back to the case. Let's go. <laughs> 